next guest. Michio Kaku is a child prodigy who became one of the greatest minds of our time. I'm not exaggerating here. He's a top physicist. He's kind of picked up where, picked up where Einstein left off. Uh, Kaku wrote Physics of the Future, among many other books, talking to hundreds of other scientists to piece together what our life will look like in the next century. And he joins us now with a glimpse into 2012 and the future. What an honor to have you here. Glad to be on. I tweeted out that, uh, that if people watch this, you are definitely going to be the smartest person they hear from today. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you, first of all, recently we reported on the finding of a few planets that are sort of Earth-like, but too hot. You're thinking that we may soon find an Earth twin somewhere in the galaxy. That's right. The holy grail of planetary astronomy is to find a twin of the Earth in outer space. Right. We came very close in 2011. Planets to have the right distance from the sun, but right. the wrong size. The right size, but the wrong distance from the sun. I think in 2012, we will bag it. We will find an Earth-like twin in space, and that's going to change our understanding of our role in the right. universe. Uh, in, when we wondered, when we, when we heard about these discoveries, what the implications were, and most scientists were saying, it's, it's not relevant that these aren't right. It's the idea that we are better able to look for and, and better able to hone in on what we're looking for. And perhaps E.T. will phone home as, as, as a consequence, because these planets are planets that perhaps have liquid oceans. Liquid right. water is a universal solvent that makes possible DNA. All right, let's talk about the weather. Weird weather all over the place. We had these, uh, these, these storms through America, these tornadoes. We got snow in different places. What do you think is happening with the weather? Well, the weather's been wacky recently, but in part because the Earth has been heating up. Now, we can debate how much human activity mm -hmm. drives the global warming, but the Earth is warming up, which right. means more energy. More energy means more swings, droughts in one area like yep. Texas, and snowstorms and flooding in other areas. We might have to get used to it. All right, and when you talk about uh, getting warmer, uh, let's talk about solar storms. That's right. Every 11 years, the sun has a temper tantrum, throws a volley of radiation at the Earth. So far, we've dodged the bullet. But we're very young in the space age. We're not used to having our satellites get knocked out right. because of a solar flare, but it could happen. And what are the implications of that? Well, that means the Internet, GPS, weather satellites, all of it is on the Internet. Plus, telecommunications on the Earth could also be disrupted. Uh, in Quebec, they had a blackout once because a solar flare hit the planet that Earth. Was back in 1989, I think. Uh, that's right. And our power plants are not reinforced. We physicists have asked Congress to pay for a few hundred million dollars to reinforce our power plants, make redundant satellite right. systems, because at some point, it's going to happen. But we, we think about other things in politics these days. <laughs> We're not necessarily thinking about grids and electricity. We probably should be. Uh, okay, here's the big one. There are people who think that on December the 21st, 2012, uh, the ancient Mayans predicted the world will end. Will we be here a year from now? First of all, don't quit your day job. Okay. Don't sell the store, because you're going to be around on December 22nd, uh, 2012. The Mayan calendar is cyclical. One, end, one cycle ends, the next cycle begins. Right. There's no tenth planet out there that's going to come barreling down to knock the Earth out of its orbit. No black hole is going to eat up the planet Earth. We're going to be around to see January 2013. So it makes for good movies and books, but, uh, but not, not for planning. It makes for best sellers, but not good science. What would you do uh, for people who are out there who are watching and planning, saying, well, how do, I, how do I make money or how do I prepare? What do I do best? What's the big change that you think we're going to see in 2012 that you can prepare for? Well, I think uh, all you can prepare for is the fact that, that change accelerates. Right. And get used to it. We're going to have to get used to the fact that computer power doubles every 18 months. Wow. We're going to have to get used to the fact that our appliances are going to be smart, more intelligent. Uh, for example, uh, 3D television without glasses. Right. Uh, watch for it in your living room. Without those clunky glasses, right. you'll be able to watch full-blown three dimensions. Which is what some people's big complaint is. I just don't want to wear those glasses, but that's all changing. And that's course, coming. The computing power doubling every 18 months means more computers to buy for your kids. Right. <laughs> uh, Michio Kaku, what a pleasure to see you. Thank you for being with us. My pleasure. All right, your top stories are next, including a live report from Des Moines.